Everyone, David Bommel back with Kyle. Kyle, great to see you again, man. Great to see you again as well. Really looking forward to this. I love your demos. Absolutely. What are you going to demo today? So I'm going to demo some SSH password cracking using a tool called Hydra. Right. And then I'm going to set up very quickly, very easily, a honeypot for you to be able to catch any kind of SSH attempts and set up essentially an SSH honeypot. Brilliant. Go for it. So let's jump right in. Uh, this is Cisco Modeling Labs here, if you're not familiar with it. It's a great tool to be able to essentially create your own network topology and simulate it. It's fantastic. Um, very cool tool. So here I've set up a little network here. I've got a client on the left, a server that I'm gonna try to crack the password via SSH for, and then an Ubuntu honeypot that we're gonna use a little later on. So uh, let me go ahead and pull up the command line here. And let's just go ahead and start just by scanning the network uh, so you can get an idea of what's on there. So, and map, and give it the subnet flag, and let's just put in our subnet here. So, we've got a few devices on this network. We now don't know the IPs of them, though. Um, let's go ahead and start with dot .11 there. Uh, and just to show you that Hydra is already installed on here, we're just going to do Hydra-H, and you can see that we're getting some, you know, instructions here on how to use it. Um, let's go ahead and- Is this kind of Ubuntu or something? Uh, this is actually running, this particular host is Alpine Linux. Okay. Uh, the honeypot that we'll use later is Ubuntu. Okay. So we're gonna be going ahead and doing it from Alpine here. Should work very similarly though. Um, and just to show you, we have some different word lists here. And if you're not familiar with what a word list is, it's just a dump of lots of different passwords that have been exposed over the years. Uh, a very common one is called rocky.txt. And just to show you here, we have a couple of them in this directory here, user share word list. And you can see rocky.txt is a very yeah. common, popular one. It's a very large file, tons of different passwords in here. If I was to run through with this one, it would take us a long time. So I've gone ahead and created a little short version here uh, called top passwords shortlist. And if we want to just take a look at uh, what that looks like here, top passwords shortlist, just a few passwords on there. It's going to try different ones. Um, let's just go ahead and see. So I'll just say this because we always get pushback on this. We're using short dictionaries yes. or password lists just to save time. Yes. That's the only reason. Yeah, it would take, uh, it would be a very long video uh, if we didn't use a short list. Yeah. So, and we're talking like millions and millions of possible passwords yeah. that it go through. Yeah. In a real life environment, you might want to do that because you don't necessarily know what it is. But just for the convenience and just to demonstrate what you can do here, yeah. we've narrowed that list down quite a little bit here. So, uh, let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to go ahead and start the command with Hydra dash L, and you can do a lowercase L if you know the the username already. If you do an uppercase L, you can actually use a, another um, dictionary list as well too, nice. and try to guess the pa the username that way as well. Uh, just to save time, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to assume that the username that we're going to log in with here is admin. Uh, we're going to do capital P because we're going to use a uh, word list here for the password and try to brute force our way into it. So we'll give it the path there to top um, passwords shortlist there. Uh, we're going to give it the dash T tag, which is the number of threads that will be running. Uh, let's go ahead and set that to four. And then let's go ahead and put in the server that we want to try to crack into. So 192 168.1.11. Let's go ahead and let this run. So it's going to create essentially four simultaneous threads trying to create an SSH connection. Uh, and anytime one of those is going to be successful, it's going to print that out to us. And that dash F flag that I gave there, if it finds one successful one, it's going to quit out. So it saves us time that way as well yeah. too. So it's going ahead and running right now. We should see some results here in a second, hopefully. And there we go. So it looks like we did get one hit. Uh, the login on this particular host here, the username was admin, just as we suspected, and the password is Cisco123. Oh, so well, I get so much flack about passwords like that. Again, it's just a demo to demonstrate how the tool works. Correct, yeah. correct. Obviously, in a real life environment, there's going to be a bit more of a complex yeah. password there. Yeah. Uh, but that's why you would leverage a word list because yeah. a lot of passwords are reused. A lot of people don't practice you know, the most secure ways to do things. Uh, but there are ways as well, too, where you can do essentially random numbers and different things to brute force it as well. So lots of different ways that you can generate passwords that you're going to attempt for this type of cracking yep. brute force attack. Um, so just for the sake of the demo, yep. we use a simple one here. That's cool. Very nice demo. Can you go back to your topology? Absolutely. So it's a client on the left. Are you attacking the server at the bottom right? Okay. Yep. Yep. That's what we're doing right now. Let's go ahead and set up a honeypot and see if we can try to have some added security around here. So yeah. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with what a honeypot is, it's typically a server that's left intentionally vulnerable. Uh, it's left out there to essentially entice some kind of attacker 
to go after it in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but under the hood, it's doing some kind of logging mechanism and monitoring mechanism so that way it can report upstream. So if you see somebody connecting to, let's say, a honeypot, it's serving no other purpose other than to catch people who are doing malicious stuff. Yeah. So if somebody's connecting to it, trying to SSH to it in this particular case, uh, you know, that's a potential bad actor yeah. and you want to be able to trigger a security alert based off of that. So we have an Ubuntu host here. For simplicity, I'm calling it Ubuntu Honeypot, but in a real world scenario, you're going to want it to look just as real as any other type of server out there. So yeah. let's go ahead and pull up the command line for that. And we're going to install a very quick and simple SSH Honeypot using a tool called Cowrie. It's an open source tool. Um, let's go ahead and just, I'm going to take you through all the steps here. We've already got Python installed. But I'm just going to show you how easy and quick it is to set up a, right. an SSH honeypot here. Right. Uh, so let's go ahead and make a directory for Cowrie, and let's jump into that directory there. So let's go ahead and clone the repository for Cowrie really quick. Uh, we'll go ahead and use git to do that. Uh, git clone, and let's just put in the URL here, uh, github.com slash Cowrie, and we'll clone it to our local directory here. There it goes. It is pulling it down. It's really nice though, is you're running CML virtually on your computer as a virtual machine and you can do these kind of labs, it's nice. Yeah, I'm actually doing this one in the DevNet Sandbox as oh, well okay. too. So you have a way to access uh, a, an instance of CML Sandbox on DevNet if you go to developer.cisco.com, it's there. Uh, but we do have uh, free versions of it as well too where you can have up to five nodes available to you and run, a, uh, run your own Sandbox locally that way too. Great. So we've gone ahead and uh, pull, cloned that repository from GitHub. Uh, let's just go ahead and create a virtual environment for us to run this in. Why do you want to use a virtual environment? Uh, you don't have to necessarily, but I think it's just a common good practice when you're running some kind of Python package. Uh, it just keeps things more container control, especially if you're trying to run multiple Python um, applications at the same time. You can do it in a virtual environment and those things don't interact with each other. Best practice. It is. So let's go ahead and just call this one Cowrie-env. And let's go ahead and activate it. Activate. All right, and you can see there on the left of our uh, terminal line here that we are in that virtual environment. And uh, let's go ahead and update pip and install the requirements here. Upgrade pip. And let's go ahead and install the requirements. So uh, if you're not too familiar with Python, many packages, many applications have an easy way of doing that with just a file called requirements.txt. And all you have to do is give that command and it'll go through and install any dependency that there is for that particular package. So very quick, very easy, should be done in about a second here, and we're ready to go. Nice. So we've got that. One last thing we need to do, a couple things we need to do before. First, we need to copy the config file. Um, so there is a template one in this directory here, and that's it right there with the dot dist at the end of it. We're just gonna go ahead and copy that uh, into the same directory but just get rid of it and make it a .cfg file. And we can take a look at this really quick. Um, just open it up in VI. VI. Man, I like it. Yeah, I'm not a nano guy, VI for me. No Vim either, sorry, <laughs> Quinn Snyder. If you're out there. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and just to show you, you know, it's gonna essentially give it a host name. It uses a uh, server four as a default one. So typically Calry, uh, it will be listening on port 2222. Uh, normally SSH is running on port 22. So the way that we're gonna essentially forward, because most people are gonna wanna connect to SSH on port 22, yeah. we're gonna set up a uh, redirect on that particular port. Oh, so okay. it forwards it to port 2222. So yeah, okay. uh, we're just gonna edit IP tables here really quick. IP tables uh, and just set this here for the TCP connections. And then going to a destination port of 22. So we're gonna redirect it port. 2222. Go ahead and hit enter there. And let's go ahead and save that. And you can see there it's updated IP tables. It's going to be routing anything that's just has the destination 22 to that port 2222 there. So Cowrie can listen to it. So we're ready. Yep. Let's go ahead and start Cowrie. Very quick and simple here. Just do bin slash Cowrie start. And it's up and running. And we can just check the status of this really quick as well. Similar command, but we'll give it status instead. And you can see Cowrie's up and running. We see the process ID there as well. Yep. So let's go ahead and tail the logs here for this particular um, instance of it running. Tail F. And those logs are in var log Cowrie. And the one that we want is Cowrie.log. 
So we're tailing those logs there. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little split screen action here. Open this up, move this over here. All right, we got that split screen there. We're on our client here again. Uh, let's go ahead and let's try that Hydra command again. And let's just change the destination to this honeypot here. So 21, go ahead and run that. Yep, nice. You can see we got some stuff coming in here. So you can see all these connections that are happening. We see the host, uh, the IP address, where these are coming from. Uh, we can get a lot of detail here as well too in terms of what username and password are being attempted as an example. So this is a way to essentially set up a honeypot very quickly and easily. You can extend these capabilities a bit further as well too. So maybe you wanna send these logs to Splunk, install a forwarder on here and be able to send those to Splunk and have it, an alert that's triggered inside of Splunk when somebody's accessing this. Because you know, like I said, anytime somebody's communicating with a honeypot, typically they're doing it for malicious reasons because there's no other reason to do it. So, uh, this is a quick way. We did it in a few minutes here. Set up a H SSH honeypot. Anybody can do it at home very quick and easily. That's great. I like it. It's very simple. Very nice. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, is there, does Cisco have training that can help someone become like you, like learn ethical hacking type thing? Absolutely. So if you go to netacad.com, the Cisco Networking Academy has an entire free course there on ethical hacking. It's over 70 hours of content. They'll provide you with a lab environment as well. That's free as part of that as well too. So tons of stuff in there tons of hands-on labs that you can do. And once you complete that course, you're able to do the capture the flag challenges on Cisco U. And once you complete one of those capture the flag challenges, you earn a certificate in ethical hacking from Cisco as well. That's great. So it's a great path to do if you're interested, if you're a blue team person already, and you wanna learn a little bit more about how the red teams operate that you're trying to protect against, it's a great way to supplement some additional skills into your portfolio. Um, these things that I showed you here today as well, those are gonna be available sometime this summer on Cisco U as well right. as free tutorials. So you can go to u.cisco.com and later this summer, we're gonna have these tutorials available so you can follow along and do these things at home too. That's great. So for everyone who's watching, Kyle does these great demos. What do you want Kyle to demo? So give us suggestions in the comments. You know, which tools would you like him to demo? Let us know. What are you thinking? Any tools that you wanna come and demo later? I don't know, there's, there's so many of them. I think uh, let's just go through the list and just jump through it. Very curious to hear what the, uh, your audience has to say as well too, because there's a lot of different directions that we can go, so. Brilliant, Cole, thanks so much, man. Cheers, always a pleasure.